Today we are going to be talking about the Robertson clan from Louisiana and the infamous show Duck Dynasty. Now, I'm sure a lot of you may know that Duck Dynasty is no longer airing new episodes for whatever reason. We can pretty much assume why. But and however, Phil Robertson has his own YouTube channel. Y'all need to go follow it. Check it out. They have a podcast. They have a show they got called Unashamed with Phil and Jace Robertson. They have special guests on that talk about various things. And y'all already know, with them being so strong in their faith, they absolutely share God's word. And I am here for it. Now, another little fun fact. Some of you may know, but some of you don't. And to catch you up to speed, for those who may be new and don't know what I'm talking about, I have to have major dental surgery, which cost $37,000. It is a lot of money. But and however, I am motivated and determined to work my tushy off and save $37,000 so I can have my surgery. I currently have $2,000 saved, which might not be much to some people, but it's a lot for this little backwoods broke girl like me. But I got faith. I got faith that God is going to hold my hand and help me through this. I'm going to save my $37,000 and I'm going to be able to schedule my extensive, crucial life-saving dental surgery. Now, with that said, the dentist I found that is able to take on my task of fixing everything in my mouth. It's more than just teeth, by the way. It's like I gotta have bone grafting, gum grafting, dental implants. I gotta have like a whole day of surgery. It's a lot. A whole lot. But anyway, the dentist is from Monroe, Louisiana. Five minutes away from the Duck Commander Warehouse. So, last December, when we went to consult with the dentist and they done all kind of x-rays, impressions, and different things, we left and went to the Duck Commander Warehouse. Now, we was going to go on a tour, but the tours were closed or whatever, so we just got to go inside the little merch store of the warehouse and... We'll browse through there and take pictures outside. Just doing that was a really cool experience because we love some Doug Dynasty, y'all. Okay? You already know, us being from Mississippi, we hunt and fish on a regular basis. So, we all about that lifestyle. And I love me some Jesus. So, yes, I am here for the Robertson family. Now, this video today... What happened to Jace's wife, Missy, recently? Y'all, this right here is just another example of why we need more people in the media and in the public eye speaking out about the love of God. Because there's more people working for the devil to silence God's word than not. And to me, that's a problem. Me being God-fearing, I'm going to speak on my love for God. I'm going to speak on the love of God. I'm going to speak on it. And I'm so proud that there are other celebrities and public figures like the Robertsons who speak openly about this and who share God's word. I appreciate them so much for that. I wish there were more celebrities that did that so more people would listen. Because let's be honest, a lot of fans, a lot of people follow these celebrities, listen to the words they say, and take the words as gospel. So why not spread the gospel, the gospel? Now, I'm going to add a few clips from Missy's recent appearance on Phil's YouTube channel and their show where she's discussing the infuriating backlash 
she received just by going to a lab a public library reading a ch- or attempting to read a faith-based children's book oh y'all the thing she's about to say you're going to be like what what and it just happened in Tennessee Tennessee y'all ah oh. When I save enough money and I am able to schedule and get my surgery, we're going to be going back to the Duck Commander Warehouse. I know my mouth's probably going to be swole up and I'm probably going to be, I don't know, like all anesthesia out or whatever. But I hope and pray these people are there just so I can say thank you. Thank you. That's it. Now I'm going to add the clip right here. Please comment your thoughts and opinions below. Thumbs up and share this video because this this situation needs to be talked about. I'm trying to think of a word. I was telling a story about Miss and I being in Israel and how these people had gathered in the name of the Lord underneath the peak of a mountain in a cave where there was literally no civilization, just... And I was I was trying to think of the word of what they established, and then I heard a voice. <laughs> I thought it was an angelic voice from heaven. You said, didn't know she had. Sl- I saw her slip in. She, she's in my eye line, but you didn't know. You were said, locked into your thoughts. She just couldn't help it. Yeah. She saw me struggling. She always struggled. She said, "Monastery." I didn't say it like <laughs> well, that. Well, I... Lee, it's like I attacked you. <laughs> Welcome. Am I not your helpmate? You are my helpmate. Man. You complete me. Jerry McGuire says, Are we rolling? Oh, we are rolling. Oh, we're rolling. We have Zach, too. This is it. This is it. Yeah, we're in it. I wouldn't miss it for the world, Jace. (laughs) Slipped in like an angel. Provided well, that monastery for Jay's. Well, I was I was gone for a while to Tennessee with my kids and new grandbaby and and Maris. And so when I got home, some things had happened when I was while I was there. When I got home, I said, Jace, I I have something I like to talk about on the podcast. And he didn't even ask me what it was. He was like, Okay, yeah, well let's let's I'm gonna call an album tell you you can come on. <laughs> like you don't you don't even know if it's worthy of discussing or has any validity whatsoever. He's like, Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. We'll have you on. So here I am. So yeah. give us a. Well, he did say you complete him. You, he did say you complete him. I figured, man, whatever so. it was, <laughs> if it's coming from you, it had to be good. So that was what I was trying to. Well, that's nice. I hope so. Well, so some of the stuff I'm going to tell you today, you're going to actually probably question that they're true, but they are true. And thank you for calling me. <laughs> I'm a truthful person because I I saw some things that happened this past weekend that really scared me for our country and for my grandkids. But um, it just so happens that, you know, this book, my book that I wrote with Brave Books, Because You're My Family, when I pulled up my phone, my memories on my phone a year ago were me with your grandkids at my house. Which we actually had you on the podcast and you when you wrote the book, yes, right? you told, yes. You told the something. name of it is because, because you're my, you're my family, family. and right. and so I didn't have like Maris wasn't there; she's a tiny baby, and um, they don't live here. And so I asked, could I use y'all's grandkids mm-hmm. to come over? And they live right down the street, and we have a relationship, and they were just precious. And we just did some some marketing stuff with them. Played some games that are in the back of the book, and they just. And this is part of a series of books, right? With brave books, and so they asked me to do this book. What is the theme of your book? The theme of my book, so it's like it's a series of books, and so the the reason that it's a tiger with two lion parents is because he's adopted, and that happens in a previous book. It's all kind of continual stories, and it's based on what's called Freedom Island, and um, Alex's kids loved the map. I mean, they were all over the map where you can find where each story setting is on the map. There's sword fighting, there's pirates, there's, it's just, it's really exciting adventure. My grandkids love books. They love to be read books. Well, this one is more on the sweet side and it just fit, you know, our family perfectly. And what we're doing as a family, we have a lot of um, adopted 
you know, kids in our family, um, between all of us, the Robertsons. Then we also have children who are just kind of grafted in. That We're aren't. the United Nations. Of <laughs> yeah, have, you know, from we have all different skin colors, all different backgrounds, all different accents. So it was just really a good fit for our family for me to do this. And because it mirrors what the Lord has done for us. And it's about forgiveness and unconditional love. So I just love it so much. This book will never change, no matter what happens in the storyline around it, because the Father's love never changes for us, and, and and forgiveness will never not be there for us. And so I love it. Well, what I'm getting at is it's one year ago today, yet tomorrow, that this book is going to oh, come came out. Thank you. Who are some of the other um, authors? authors? Yeah, because it's a really interesting lineup of people. Mm-hmm. They have written books. Well, they're kind of models. Are, they take, they get people who are famous, right? Right. They co-author. Co-author, yeah. With some famous um, people who actually already have a platform so yeah. that they can get this out. And it's based on conservative Christian traditional values. Right. And they put it in such a fun, non it's like non-controversial way right. when you read the books. They're just precious. They really are. So like you could read these in... Like the public library, for instance. Well, I'm <laughs> yes. saying it because it, the the spiritual qualities are subtle, right? Very subtle. In fact, the word God or Jesus, church, they're not in mm-hmm. the body of the book. Now, in some of the activities in the back, there are. Yeah. But um, and I said this on the f- first podcast about this book was that one of my friend's daughters is a teacher at a public school, and she was like can I read it to my kids in my classroom? I was like, actually, you can, because it doesn't talk about God. How sad we are to be in this state where if it doesn't talk about God, yes, you're free to read it to your children. But it is godly principles and family principles. And so... It's it's perfect for but you like teachers out there. But like after it's over, because they made a little, it was my favorite part of the book, they had a little cartoon character of you, which oh. I thought was really cute. That's in there. I, I know. It's... And then you would like, you know, throw some spiritual nuggets. Yes, yes. And, and there some are, Bible verses. Here it is. So see, there's a little cartoon <laughs> character of me. Yeah. But there's some little spiritual nuggets and activities and games in the back that kind of help you implement and help your children understand about forgiveness. Because forgiveness goes both ways. As children, we have to forgive our parents, Mm -hmm. too. There's many times where I've asked my children for forgiveness. It's not just about our children disobeying us. It's about us as parents making the wrong decision and going back to them and saying, look, my bad. (laughs) I should never have done that. And so forgiveness goes both ways, and and the book addresses that, which I think is just amazing. You did use a scripture reference on the last I did? Yeah, it says 1 John 4. Oh, yes. 10 and 11. About love, I was in 1 John last podcast. Mm -hmm. In well, this is love, not that we have loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Yeah. Loved. If God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Well, it's a pretty good message. Yes. It's easier said than done. Children are being attacked with in the public school systems and in the community. That's the reason why books like this, we have to get them to the families and families need to know about this. So, What happened this weekend, and I'm just going to tell you, I I was not up to date on all of this. So I went in kind of blindsided about it. You were were going to do an event for for Brave Books. So what happened a few weeks ago, Kirk Cameron came out with a book with Brave along the same series, and it's called As You Grow. And it talks about some of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, and gentleness is what he wrote with Brave Books, and it's about the sky tree and building your life and even going through bad things in your life, but learning how to deal with them with the fruits of the Spirit, which is fantastic, fantastic book. Great illustrations. So he started um, doing a tour with libraries throughout the country, just reading his book for free, inviting people in the community. Public libraries? Public libraries. Okay. And started getting canceled. And people started pushing back. Well, which, that just... Which I'd been hearing about this. I did not. But... I had heard about this a while back because basically he had... He had uh, there had been a few stories about this because he had, he had called and, I mean, he had set up through the libraries to do a reading and they were canceling. And what drew attention to it was these same libraries were doing drag store, drag queen 
or transgender story hours, right. but wouldn't allow him to read his book. That's what drew my About attention. love, joy, and gentleness. Exactly. So so <laughs> I just want to mention that, that I had recognized Good. I'm, I'm glad. And maybe I, our I audience knew about the story, is so. more well versed than Look how this closely parallels when Matthew wrote what he wrote in Matthew 19. Little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples, the disciples of Jesus, rebuked those who brought the children. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. I would not want to answer to God for hindering children to come here. That's him. right. I would not want to answer. It's amazing that closely, that's point. So closely parallels yeah. yes. what just went yes. down that's with all. That's a good point. Yes. So, so they had they asked me to join Kirk and read my book and gave me a list of places where I would, you know, if I could go. Well, one of them was right around Nashville. And I said, actually, I'm going to be in the area visiting with my new grandbaby and I'll be there for a few days. I would love to be a part of something like that. So drove to Hendersonville from our farm in Tennessee on Saturday morning, and they asked me to be there early because they wanted to go through security measures and all that. And I thought, hmm, it's a little strange. It was a public library, but okay. So asked me to be there at 9 a.m. That The event started at 1030, and I thought that was a little early, but I obliged, got there about 845, cold, rainy day. And it had been beautiful the whole week before, like in the 70s and 80s, beautiful in Tennessee. So I thought there's not going to be a big turnout for this, sadly. I was wrong. I pulled up at 845 and there was a line all the way out in front of the library. People are standing under umbrellas in their raincoats holding their children. And y'all had another uh, guest there too. Yes. So also Bethany Hamilton, if you'll remember her from the movie Soul Surfer, she her arm was bitten off by a shark. Yep. She still surfs to this day and competes, um, but she wrote a book also called Surfing Through Fear, and it's another book with Brave, and it's about overcoming your fear through adversity. So it was going to be Kirk's book, my book, and Bethany's book. Bethany is in um, Hawaii, so she asked her friend who lives in the, in the community of Hendersonville, Riley Gaines, to read her book for her. And tell us who Riley is. Okay, so Riley Gaines, she was there, and Bethany asked her to read her book because she lives five minutes from the Hendersonville Library. It's where she grew up. So I got to meet Riley. She is precious. And the the lines are forming, the lines are forming, lines are forming outside. And so um, what happens is, and I'm not going to go through all of this, but what they started doing was they put out um, the American flag is outside of all these public libraries. Everyone gathers around hundreds by this point of people. And that we do the, we put our hand over our heart, say the Pledge of Allegiance and sing the Star Spangled Banner. And then we all sing God Bless America. And Kirk kind of goes through the foundation of our country and the monuments about, um, and I'm, I'm not going to get all this right. So look that up because I think he did a whole movie called Monumental. And yeah, it's about did. the monument yeah. that founded this country. And I learned a lot by listening to him. And he had a, he had a bullhorn shouting through the rain and hundreds of people standing in front of this uh, library. So he said, the library is about to open up in about five minutes. So you're going to be able to get in and get warm. We're only going to have to have get a, a few hundred people in a conference room at a time, but we're going to get y'all in through these different readings. So just be patient with us. So we go in to do some videos, marketing videos for Brave about, you know, use certain codes and you get a percentage off and things like that. And they had to set up in the this beautiful library part. You can see the depth of the library behind us, multi-level, gorgeous library. And so Kirk and I are standing there and we're trying to do these little promo videos and there's just a lot of noise happening. And I look at one of the Brave team and I was like, I'm talking, I just stop. And I was like, we're going to, that's never, you're never going to run this because of all the noise. Can you ask them to hold their voices down? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah. So they walk over there, ask them to hold their voices down. So we start over. We start talking again. So are these people in the library? The library staff. The library's not open yet. Okay. All the people are standing outside, yeah. all the attendees. The staff, yeah. The okay. staff. So I look at the Brave team member again, and I said, I, I don't think they're getting the concept of, like, don't talk. 
while we're doing these videos. So they walk over there again, and, and I have no clue at this point what's going on. I just think, you know, we do a lot of reality TV. We're not on a set. Pe yeah. People just forget. We're in their space. You know, they mm -hmm. forget yeah. sometimes to keep their voices down. So we're asking them a favor. So at this point, they're, they're just not. They're slamming books together. They're kicking cabinets. They're clap. They're hollering out loud. And I was Didn't like, you say playing loud music. Well, that that's coming. But yeah. I mean, they haven't done that yet. Well, well, a guy in the background walks down. And one of the brave team members says, "Hey, can you ask your staff to hold it down?" And this guy yells, "Hey, you're not supposed to be here anyway." And Kirk fires back and says. Yes, we are supposed to be here. And at that moment, I thought, "What? What? What's going on here?" Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a little, there's a little tension for some reason. And I, I just, again, I wasn't aware of all of the things leading up to actually being there that morning. There had been a lot of pushback, and so we took a break, and I got kind of up to speed. And the deal was when Kirk, when they, when they scheduled to have this function at the library. There was so much outpouring, great response from the community that the guy that was running the library could not believe. He was like, whoever y'all are, y'all must be great because this is the, the most response we've ever had from a public event like this. This is going to be awesome. Whoever this Kurt Cameron guy is. Yeah, must be so he didn't know who y'all were. <laughs> so, so Brave corrected him for my understanding. Well, he finds out who Kirk Cameron is. And that's when the pushback began from them and from oh, them. Right. And he started a campaign in the community to shut it down without officially canceling it, because then he knew that wouldn't be good for their library. So what happened in the next few minutes really showed them they were trying to disrupt what was happening. And uh, so we couldn't get our marketing videos done. And Riley, bless her heart. Hers was next, and I stood in there with her. Kirk left. <laughs> I realized, you know how they say when you come into trauma, you either you either fight, your flight, or you freeze. We had one of each. Kirk Kirk walked out. I froze, and Riley took him on. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I thought, what is happening? They started blaring music, and from behind the desk, and she just was like. This is ridiculous. So yeah. she stopped, walked over there and said, can y'all please just turn this music down? We're just asking you for 60 seconds. If you'll just give us 60 seconds, if you can turn that music off. And the lady said, well, I just, I'm not one that can make that decision. I don't have that authority to turn the music off. I was like, no one's in the lot. It's not even open. And so that's when I turned my camera. She said, oh, and then she said, um, we're just trying to look for things to deal with our stress. Stre what stress? It's not even open yet. We're yeah. just standing there with a camera doing a marketing video. That's when I turned my phone on. I started recording. I was like, this is, this is blatant and ridiculous. So for the next 60 seconds or so, we tried to push through Riley's video, and they were hollering and laughing and banging books and really disrupting and she walked over and just <laughs> kind of took them on and i have the video and i've asked her she said please send it to me because i want to use it too because i thought this is what it's going to take i froze I, later i'm always the one that thinks oh later i should have said you know stress doesn't re it just requires kindness if you would just be kind it would eliminate your stress jesus was was all about kindness and love and i started going over things in my mind like i should have said but that's what i do riley walked right over there and did it this is this is the verse that came to mind and i know y'all have been in first peter and second peter but first peter in first peter 5 8 be self-controlled and alert your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That is the verse that came to my mind because even though I have a lion in our book and the Lord refers about the strength of lions, but he's also, Peter's talking about the devil right here and about how he prowls and how he is ruthful, ruth, ruthless and, and, and well, they're driven to shed innocent blood. They're sneaky. 
I yeah. mean, he's sneaky. Schemes, he yeah, yeah. Strategy. Because if there is anybody that can be a prey and be more vulnerable than a child, That's there right. is not. That's right. And so they're they're trying to take children out and their families at public libraries. Are you kidding? Taught by us and written on our heart by the one who created us and loves us more than anything else in the world. And then how to relay that with fruits of the spirit and then how to overcome your fear to achieve your goals and to, and to become what God wants you to be. They're thwarting those messages. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that they were, pro- what, what they're protesting. I mean, you're there to help kids and put, yeah. put God-like <laughs> qualities. Let's take another break. Okay, so you're open to the other side, whether it's the drag queen or the whatever, the trans books. So they're free to come and share in this space. Exactly. So why is, can't you at least be fair that the other side would have an opportunity? Well, Obviously, especially when you invited them. That's what I'm saying. Then when their you, answer is no. No. Answer in other words, you, your side can't speak here. The other side Even though can. we invited you. <laughs> Even though you've been invited. Now that we've done some research. <laughs> yeah. We... We don't like your wholesome values. We can't uninvite you because that would make us look bad. It's kind of what's going on, you're right, in the whole culture, the whole nation. It's like the idea is in these supposedly public squares, your side can't speak. Yeah. You you know, it's you can't speak. Really an attack on 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 freedom of speech. On freedom of speech. That's what it is. Conversations. Because this should at least be a free speech issue. I mean, like we always take into heart, because like you said, Dad, it really is about much more than that. But at the very, at just a cultural level, that was a huge attack on free speech. I mean. Depravity is a dangerous thing. So a couple of things that really hit me. At first, I was just kind of shocked because I was like deer in the headlights. I didn't know that they had battled this beforehand. And so I was I was just kind of taking it all in. I was impressed with Riley going ahead and taking them on, but in a kind way. She just called him out. She's like, this is ridiculous. Like, y'all are acting like children. And we're just asking you to act like an adult. And let us finish this. Give us 60 seconds. We'll be out of your hair. Because they had us move to a conference room to do our readings. And I could only be there for the first round. They had two rounds scheduled, and I could only be there for the first one. But when I left to pull out of the parking lot, there were hundreds more people down the sidewalk, down the street, hold in the rain, holding their children, waiting to get in. Some of them never got in because we just ran out of time. But a thought that I had was not only were they rude to us, you know, okay, they don't like our values. They're going to be rude to the three or four people that are there with the cameras. They were super rude to their entire community that lived there in Hendersonville, Tennessee, because that is a public library. And they could have invited all of those people that were standing out in the rain to come and form lines inside the library, down the aisles, Mm -hmm. sit on the ground. And we weren't even reading in the library part. We were down the hall in a conference room. They wouldn't let them in. They made them stand outside in the freezing cold with their children in the rain. At a library. Total rudeness to me. Oh, And this is not in California or New York City. This is in Nashville. People are moving to Nashville or in the surrounding areas to get away from this stuff. The book of John, chapter 17, starting at verse 13. And now I come to thee. And these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thine word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. 
and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. Verse 25, O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Ain't God good? Ain't God good? And let me tell you something. A lot of you may know, when you speak about God's word and you share God's word, that irritates demons, that irritates the devil. And the devil will always be there to try to irritate your spirit. God tells us that in the Bible. God tells us there'll be temptations, there'll be trials and tribulations, but God is more powerful than any anything. I believe God put us here on this earth. We all have a purpose. I believe that we all should be sharing God's love and God's word. We should all discuss God's word. We should all feel comfortable enough to discuss the Bible and discuss God's word without fear of being attacked or shamed. You know? But that's the devil. Give it to God. God will deal. God will deal. We just can't be silenced by the devil. We can't let the devil silence us because that is the devil. The devil works hard, but God works even harder, and we all know that. Thumbs up and share this video and let everybody else know too. Comment your thoughts and opinions. Smash that subscribe button. Click the bell beside subscribe to all. That way you'll be notified whenever YouTube sends out notifications. I love y'all so much for watching, and I will see y'all in my next video.